Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and our 2020 Oboda video series. Today we're going to be bringing you etude number five for trombone. Last one! Stay tuned after the video for practice tips for everyone, not just for the high school students auditioning. We're going to be going over soft playing and breathing. Hit it! So this etude was deceptively challenging. I think a lot of us get really excited when we see a slow etude pop up in an audition setting. You're like, oh, finally, an easy one. I don't have to play super fast. Oh, it's so easy. Wrong. So when we're at a really slow tempo like this, our rhythms, our pitch, our articulations, all of that is a lot more drawn out. So it's a lot more exposed. You know, you're holding that note for a lot longer time. And like we did in all our other etude videos, we're gonna ask ourselves those same two questions. Question number one, why are they asking this? And I think the number one reason they're asking this particular etude is soft playing. Um, this is probably the biggest demonstration of soft playing that we've had in any of these Aboda etudes so far. We have a lot of dynamics down at piano and pianissimo. So they're really going to be listening to things like, can you still support your air at these lower dynamics? What does your tone quality sound like? What does your pitch sound like? Younger players sometimes have a tendency to, as we get down to the softer dynamics, um, the air support just isn't quite there or the pitch could, you know, go flat as we go softer. So I think the number one thing when we're talking about how to practice our soft playing is definitely our air support and our air flow. Meaning we do not want the air to stop at all. We want the air to keep going. One of the biggest misconceptions about playing soft is that you actually need to take in less air, which I don't agree with at all. You need to take in just as much air as you would if you were playing loud and enough air to sustain through all those phrases. So let's just take a phrase from this etude as an example. Let's start in beat four, measure four, and then we'll go all the way to beat four in measure seven. Before we play anything on the trombone, I want us to check our airflow on our hands. We've talked about this before in one of our Texas TMEA audition videos, making sure we're breathing properly. I showed you guys how to do the breath monitor. I'll put the link down in the description for that video. It goes into more detail there. We want to make sure we're taking a nice deep breath and then blowing out warm air on our hands. We shouldn't hear any noise in the sound or in the throat while we're breathing in. So we're gonna take a nice big breath and just blow through this phrase like we would if we were playing it. So our air needs to be like we were playing and then our tonguing and articulations can be. We can also go through our dynamics too, right? We start at piano, we go up to forte, and then we decrescendo all the way down to piano. So making sure our air is going all the way to the end. I'm gonna play this clip in the music so we can all do it along with the music together. So this can be done for the whole piece, you know, it's not very long. This can be done for the whole etude to check your airflow, making sure that your air is flowing the entire time through. I find these airflow exercises particularly helpful for soft playing. It just really helps me think about making sure my air is still sustaining, still going throughout the whole phrase. Another reason I think they are asking this etude is rhythmic accuracy. At this slow tempo, there is a lot of room for discrepancies in the rhythm. Also, at such a slow tempo, we have a lot of subdivisions. We even see 30 second notes, which as trombone players, we usually never see. If you haven't yet, you can watch our video for A2 number four. We go over practice strategies to improve rhythmic accuracy, and those same strategies can be applied here. I have a trick for deciphering the rhythmic accuracy of this piece. We're in 4-8 here, which we don't see very often, which means the eighth note gets the beat, and then there are four eighth notes in each measure. I just like to think of this tune in 4-4. Four, four. So I know what you're thinking, 4-8, four, 4-4, four, four, the math doesn't quite add up. 
But all you gotta do is just kind of change some of the notes around a little bit. So for example, we start with a quarter note here in 4A, but it's worth two beats, right? So I just think of that quarter note as a half note, right? So a quarter note would be a half note, an eighth note would be a quarter note, two eighth notes would be two sixteenth notes, and four thirty-second notes would be four sixteenth notes. That just makes a lot more sense in my brain, so I kind of think of it that way when I'm playing through it. So let's move on to question number two. Where's that spot where everyone is going to mess up? I know a lot of you might say the grace notes in measure one. If you haven't yet, go check out our video for A2 number two. We talk all about grace notes in that video. I'll put the link down there. I would say the most difficult spot is definitely the pickups into measure eight, going all the way to beat three in measure 10. Probably one of the most deceptively challenging things about this spot is that dotted quarter note in beat nine. I guarantee you a lot of people are gonna jump the gun on that. So we need to make sure this dotted quarter note actually equals three beats, and then it's tied over to that 32nd note. So we're actually holding this note until beat four. So that's a long time at this slow tempo. I guarantee people are gonna move too early there. So if you can play that correctly, you're gonna stand out. Also, these three measures cover a really wide range, right? We start on that low A sharp, go all the way up to a high G sharp, you know, almost two octaves above that and then back down. So moving across the horn that much in a short amount of time is gonna require a lot of changes here, right? So what I always like to think of when I'm going from the low register to the high register or the high register down to the low register is the shape of my mouth, right? For lower notes, I like to think of O, O, and for the higher notes, E. So in this two measure span of time here, you know, you should be going to the mouth shape of O, O, E, O, and back down. So you need to make sure you're changing the inside of your mouth as you go all the way up two octaves higher and back down. If you're not making that shift with your mouth and your jaw, the notes aren't gonna come out correctly. Okay, moving on to our words. Lento means to play slowly. So as you can see, it's a pretty slow tempo. We're at eighth note equals 66 beats per minute. The next word is lacrimoso. Again, excuse my Italian. Lacrimoso means sadly or tearfully, sad, mournful. We're in this key of C sharp minor. So it's a minor key, really sad, the slow tempo. So it should be easy for you to think of playing it like that. You know, maybe you can think about something that makes you sad while you play it and really put a lot of emotion to it. If you can really convey these words while you're playing this etude, that's really gonna make you stand out. If you can paint a picture or tell a story with this etude, you have a huge opportunity to do this here with a slow tempo. Thank you for watching our 2020 Aboda video series. This is the last video. Um, let us know down in the comments what you thought of this video or the whole series in general. We would love your feedback, love to hear from you. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. We will see you soon. Bye.